Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron, this is kind of an older King James book, pro King James book, but it is fan Fantastic. So we're going to take a look on the inside of this. By definition, I'll read a little bit on the back. Takes on the most difficult words in the English Bible and sets forth their origin, meaning, and usage in a clear and concise manner. In addition to the interesting word studies, there are 11 appendices which help readers of all skill levels comprehend and enjoy their Bible as never before. So let's see where we'll get this from. This is the expanded edition. First printing, 96. I got the second printing. Uh, printing in 97. So this is 22 years old, printed in the United States of America. This book is dedicated to Michael Ripplinger for reasons so obvious to his family and his Savior and so well hidden from all the world. I'm going to guess Michael is Gail's wife. So he has some other books. I may have a couple of these other ones. Christ Honoring Commentary on Jonah, Holy Women, Signs, Wonders, and Miracles, New Testament Survey, Outline Studies, uh, Genesis Chapter 3, Outline studies on Hebrews chapter 11, Santa Claus, the great counterfeit. Um, I'll just show you the table of contents. But one thing that impressed me about this was some of the definitions, things I've never been able to find anywhere else. But uh, just excellent little definitions. Just really good. And so let's just take a look through this little book, a couple hundred pages. And I'm assuming you can still get it. Let's see. It is exactly pages 203. Um, like Sardinox, I turn to. This is number 117. Obviously, this is you know one of the jewels mentioned in Scripture, one of the rocks. Okay, this makes three stones in a row. This one, as you might have guessed, is aligned with onyx. See above. The sardonyx has parallel bands, a light-colored layer being combined with a darker one. Some sardonyx have white layers alternated by brown ones. Now, I really got into this. The reason I was so impressed is because I was studying not only the foundations of the New Jerusalem, but I was studying like the high priest stones in his uh, breastplate. I also have photos of specimens with white, brown, and blue bands, and others with reddish yellow or nearly orange tints rather than brown. The coloration is probably due to small amounts of iron. In the Rosicrucian jewels, the sardonyx appears as the gem of victorious ecstasy and rapture, which flow from the eternal font of delight, banishing grief and what. See, I mean, now, that's obscure information. You just don't get everywhere. Once again, we must point out their rock is not is our rock for ours is alive and can deliver what their dead stones can only promise and then it has revelation uh, 21 20. let's just read what it says about the sardine stone this is not pronounced sardine for that little mediterranean fish was not on aaron's breastplate this is sardine long i See, I've always been mispronouncing it. It's a precious stone known also as a carnelian, which I've heard of that. This gem is a variety of chalcedony, clear, deep red, flesh red, or reddish white in color. It is moderately hard, capable of good polish, and often used for official seals. Since this stone is red, and the commentators know a ruby is red, they rush in to tell us that the sardin should be a sardius, and then that the sardius should be a ruby. Such scholarship would conclude that canaries are yellow and metal arcs are yellow, so metal arcs must be canaries. See, that's flawless logic. Wonderful. The Hebrew name for Sardius is Odim. This name is closely related to Adam, which means red earth, and to Edom, the name for Esau, whose red pigment was notable. Neither of these men was blood red, as is the ruby. So good stuff. He's got good stuff on the sapphire. Let's see what satiate, which we know what satiate means. This word means filled to the point of being glutted. Um, and then it quotes what satiate. So that's good. The satyr. Here the commentaries and Bible revisers fall all over themselves in their attempts to be the first to heap scorn upon the King James Bible. They do all they can to convince their readers that the Seder does not exist and that therefore the authorized version must be an error. But then, as is so often the case, they can offer us no answer to what should be substituted for the word they reject. Seder is S-A-T-Y-R. 
that same sort of devil or creature in Dayton's, Satan's service is intended is clear in the context of the verses referring to satyrs. The Bible dictionaries point out that the Hebrew word here is literally he goat, and that would be a sign of Satanism. But then cannot make the obvious connection to the Antichrist to Daniel 7 and 8. Others inform us that the word is the same as used for Harry in the description of Esau found in Genesis 27 11, but then fail to instruct their readers as to the history of the Edomites and their attempts to annihilate the chosen Hebrew race. A satyr is a sylvan related to uh, woods or forest deity or demigod represented as a monster. I'm thinking of Beowulf right now. What was the name of that monster? Grimden or something like that? Grimfell? Can't remember represented as a monster being part man and part goat he is characterized and that reminds you pan there part man part in the old hercules cartoons hurt hurt okay he is characterized by riotous mer merriment and lasciviousness anyone who knows biblical prophecy in old testament history knows that the mingling of fallen beings with humans and beasts has always resulted in overall decay of societal morality uh, these satyrs may be creatures transforming themselves in order to deceive the simple or an actual race of beings. We cannot say. One thing is certain that God who inspired the scriptures knows all things. If he says they're satyrs, we don't need to doubt that. I agree with that. None of us has seen heaven. Okay, so then it goes into the most famous of the satyrs is Pan, who plays a prominent part in the mythology of the Greeks. And that's where Caesarea Philippi, where he says, upon this rock I'll build my church. That was they used to worship pan there. It was the international pan worship. Pan pipes. Remember at Ezekiel 28, Satan had pipes in him. He has the legs, horns, and beard of a goat, and he has cloven hooves. He teaches the gods to play music upon pipes. He begins as the shepherd god responsible for keeping the sheep safe in the green pastures. He ended up seducing the moon goddess by disguising himself in dazzling white. He eventually came to symbolize the universal God, the great all. Quite a counterfeit, wouldn't you see, wouldn't you say? So I mean stuff like that is really good, like skull. This is a medical term. It's found in the chapter on leprosy. It is a dry skull, usually a leprosy on the head. When the affections on the head become scabby, they're called skulls. So what's the self-edge if you're studying the uh, uh, tabernacle? This is a border on the edge of a cloth woven in such a manner to prevent raveling and often closed by complicating the threads. What are the shambles, uh, signet, stanch, stacti, strike, surmising? This is just an excellent book. So if you can still get this, you know, it's a great book. Even if you don't like the King James, he's got so much incredible information. I think it'd be beneficial to anybody. So I'll talk with you later. God bless in Jesus' name.